joined now but from London by Scotland's only Labour MP, Ian Murray. Um, well, Ian Murray, f first of all, let's stick to the question of Brexit. Angus Robertson and the SNP proposing an alliance with you and whoever is prepared to join them, uh, including some Conservatives, to, to, to get some sort of soft Brexit at Westminster. Um, is that something you, you're keen on? Well, the First Minister is slightly behind the curve on this because this is what we've been doing uh, already. Indeed, Angus Robertson's own Brexit spokesperson, Stephen Gethins from the SNP, myself and Anna Subri, who's the Conservative MP for Broxtow, all asked the same question uh, to the Secretary of State for Brexit, David Davis, this week about page 74 of the Conservative Manifesto saying yes to the single market. So we already have that broad alliance in uh, Westminster already against a hard Brexit and we'll be pushing very hard on that and working together to make sure that's what we get. Now, I, Angus Robertson, I, I, I don't know whether you could hear him, but he said pretty clearly in uh, an interview there that should the Scottish Government get what it wants, basically what you want, staying in the single market, from its negotiations with the UK Government, um, that, that the SNP would, would have no reason to call another independence referendum. He was pretty clear on that. That presumably is something you would welcome. Well, I certainly would welcome, but what Angus Robertson also said there was that the Scottish Government would set out their criteria for what they would want out of these negotiations. And I could probably guess, uh, Gordon, that they'll put something in there that is undeliverable in order to keep independence uh, on the table. I just think it's an intellectually incoherent argument to say that Scotland being in the EU, which I agree with, is a good thing, but Scotland being in the UK is a bad thing. I think we need to put the divisive second independence referendum out of the question, rule it out now, work for the best possible solution for Brexit across the United Kingdom and make sure, as the First Minister said, if Scotland is open for business, let's take away all the divisiveness, all the uncertainty of a second independence referendum and move forward together to try and get the very best out of this bad situation. What about this idea that's also been talked about, that Angus Robertson too was talking about, about a broader progressive alliance against the Tories? That doesn't seem to be very popular with Labour in Scotland, but it does seem to have some supporters, among, some supporters uh, amongst particularly Jeremy Corbyn's backing, maybe not Mr Corbyn himself. Is there any grounds for a progressive alliance against the Tories at Westminster? Well, look, there already is, because we've always made clear that when there are issues that we agree with other parties on, we will come together and vote with them and, 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 and make the arguments in the House of Commons Chamber in Parliament and in uh, the wider country. But where we disagree with parties, whether they be on the own, our own side of the chamber or on the opposite side of the House of Commons Chamber, then we'll disagree with them. And Jeremy and Kezia have both been absolutely clear that we can't do a formal progressive alliance with a party who wants to break up the United Kingdom rather than trying to make the United Kingdom and Scotland better. I think that is a so, key so principle for the Labour Party and that's one that we will stand by. So you would rule out, for example, any electoral pact with the SNP? Oh, absolutely rule that out. And an electoral pact with the SNP actually, uh, the irony is, helps the Conservative Party because they're able to play their own nationalist agenda against the Scottish nationalist agenda and it means that we end up with a Conservative government. That's what happened in 2015 and that's likely to happen again. And if you look at what Derek Mackay said, the Finance Secretary in the Scottish Government this week, that they'll put a budget together that's just marginally different than the Tories. Uh, okay. We don't want marginal differences to the Tories. We want fundamental differences to transform the lives of people who okay. live in Scotland. You rule out an electoral alliance with the SNP, would you rule out a government with the SNP? I mean, if after the next election um, other forces than the Conservatives have a majority in government, would you rule out bringing the SNP into some sort of coalition? Look, Gordon, we've discussed this at great length on your show over a number of times. We're now talking about a general election in 2020 and formal alliances and all those kinds of issues that are completely irrelevant at this point in the electoral cycle. What we've been quite clear on and what we'll always be clear on is where political parties agree, we will work with them, we will work enthusiastically with them. Where we disagree, we will oppose them and we'll make sure that it's Labour values and what the Labour Party wants to do to bring that together. Let me just give you one example. We will be amending the Scottish budget to make sure that we can raise the resources in Scotland using the powers of the Scottish Parliament to invest in their public services and education. The SNP are fighting that. They do not want to go forward with investing in our public services in Scotland and therefore they're only doing something that's marginally different in the words of the Finance Secretary to the Tories. We okay. cannot support something like that and therefore we can't work with the SNP on that basis. Uh, what is extremely relevant right now to the current electoral cycle is whether a Scottish MP should be Shadow Secretary of State for Scotland. 
Um, well, I would, I would are you Scottish going to Labour become MP? A... Would be shadow secretary of state for Scotland. It's a very simple answer to your question, Gordon. I haven't been asked by Jeremy Corbyn to be shadow secretary of state for Scotland, and therefore I'll continue to fight Scotland's corner from the back benches. And indeed, out of the shackles of the shadow cabinet, I can be on the Scottish Affairs Select Committee. I'm working very closely with Pete Wishart, the but SNP chair, on some you, of those big will issues. Will you rejoin? Well, he hasn't asked me uh, as this moment in time, and I've been very clear to Jeremy that I would rejoin the Shadow Cabinet if he brought back the Shadow Cabinet elections. That was the process that the Parliamentary Labour Party had put out to Jeremy as an olive branch to bring unity to the party. But are you saying that's party, a condition of rejoining? It. Because, I mean, what, why is, I mean, it's been good enough for people like Keir Starmer, the fact that, that Jeremy Corbyn has just won a thumping great victory and is you know for a second time in a year if, it's, if that's not if that's good enough for people like Keir Starmer why isn't it good enough for you well I've been perfectly clear that I back Jeremy Corbyn since he got his second mandate we will all unite behind Jeremy and make sure we've got an effective uh, opposition Brexit a huge issue it's one of the fundamental issues of our time and for generations in UK and Scottish politics and it was right that Keir Starmer recognized that and went back into the shadow cabinet I've been perfectly clear that if Jeremy Corbyn grabs the Olive Branch for the Parliamentary Labour Party brings back Shadow Cabinet. But elections. you said the I other day he burned the, the Olive cabinet. Branch. Well, I think he has burned the Olive Branch, and I haven't had a conversation with Jeremy Corbyn since I resigned on the 23rd of June, and therefore we can't have that conversation about what would be required for me to return to the Shadow Cabinet. Jeremy Corbyn's seen very much as a principled politician. I have my own uh, principles, and I'm enjoying myself back on the back benches. I'm being able to press the Prime Minister and the Brexit Secretary of State with questions. I can sit on the Shadow Affairs Select Committee, and actually this week I'm trying to set up a cross-party group on the sectorial interests of Brexit, all of right, which okay, I couldn't but, do but, while being in the Shadow Cabinet. But, but, be just as effective on the back benches. But you said a moment ago that you've backed Jeremy Corbyn since he was elected leader again. But sorry, saying um, that you will not consider joining his shadow cabinet unless he implements shadow cabinet elections, which he's clearly against, that's not supporting them. That's, that's surely just rather pe petulantly refusing to recognise um, a huge vote that your party has just had. Well, not at all. We can be united as a party and we'll continue to be united uh, as a party. I will say nothing to undermine Jeremy Corbyn's leadership of the Labour Party. Dave Anderson, is, you've spoken to him, you've interviewed him. He's perfectly capable of being Shadow Secretary of State for Scotland. I can be on the Scottish Affairs Select Committee. I can set up a cross-party group on the sectorial interest for Brexit. I can ask questions to the Secretary of State. I can work with colleagues in the SNP yeah, and sure. moderate Conservatives to push the government on what, what is a huge was... issue. But I can do all of that and I can't do it if I'm sitting in the shadow cabinet because I'm restricted in what I'm able to do in Parliament. Uh, sure. What you've just said might be perfectly reasonable were you any old Labour MP, but you're not. You're the only Labour MP in Scotland. And people right across, who are Labour supporters, right across Scotland, not just in your constituency, surely have the right to expect that the only Labour MP in Scotland will act as the Shadow Secretary of State for Scotland. You, you, you're letting all of them down, not, not, just, not just your own constituents. Gordon, how possibly can I be letting anyone down when I haven't been asked to serve in the Shadow Cabinet? You could offer. And you've, you, offered. Yes, but you've just, in this interview, put conditions on it which Jeremy Corbyn could not accept. Well, there's a whole list of uh, conditions, but I don't think people in my constituents, indeed across Scotland, are worried about people being in the shadow cabinet or otherwise. What they want is politicians from Scotland to be arguing Scotland's case on big issues like Brexit and how we fund I'm, public I'm service, sorry, how I, we eradicate I, I, poverty. Are but you, all we seem to be talking about is saying, internal machinations of the shadow cabinet uh, at Westminster. Are, are, you are you seriously saying it doesn't matter whether or not a Scottish MP is the shadow secretary of state for Scotland? No, I'm merely making the point that I'm able on the back benches to be much more effective in terms of some of the big issues that are around in Scotland at the moment in terms of Brexit and other big issues. I'm able to sit on the Scottish Affairs Select Committee which is doing some great work under the leadership of uh, Pete Wisher. I'm able to set up cross-party groups that I wouldn't be able to do uh, if I was in the Shadow Cabinet. So I'm able to take some of these big issues at the moment, represent Scotland in Parliament and make sure that we're making the strong arguments that Scotland should be both in the UK and with the advantages of the European Union. I'm the only politician in Scotland that's currently arguing that at the moment whilst you've got do a Tory government government that thinks that the UK is good but the EU is bad and the SNP with the incoherent, uh, intellectually incoherent argument that the EU is good and the UK is bad. Do you think Jeremy Corbyn can lead Labour to victory in a general election? Well, Jeremy Corbyn's now got the responsibility to lead to the Labour Party into the next general election and he has to make sure that he can do you think he can win pathway it? to power and a policy platform that people will... Do you will, think he will... can win it? 
I'm sorry, I just didn't catch the question. Do you think he can win a general there. election? Well, everyone's got the opportunity to win a general election. People wouldn't have said Well, I know he's got the opportunity. Do you think he can win it? Well, it's going to be incredibly difficult unless he can put a policy platform together that can get a pathway to power for the Labour Party that means that he can give the country hope and be a Prime Minister of this country. Is, is I that think a very roundabout way of saying no? Well, it's not a very roundabout way of saying no. I think at this moment in time, if you look at the polls, it's going to be incredibly difficult for him. The next election will be in 2020 under the current fixed-term Parliament's bill, unless Theresa May brings forward something different. It's three and a half years to lay out uh, that vision for the country, and he's got a challenge to lay out that vision, to deal with globalisation, to make sure that working people are looked after and progressing in the workplace, and to make sure the next generation can do just as well as the current. But he's not done that not yet. Better. Well, it takes time to build up a policy platform that does that. I think we're in a good place place with Brexit. I think you've seen this week the Labour Party used their entire day of opposition time on Wednesday to talk about Brexit and the big issues. We pushed the government and indeed won the argument because we didn't okay. have to push this to a vote and we worked with both the SNP, the moderate Conservatives, the Liberal Democrats and the one Green uh, MP in Parliament to put forward uh, those arguments. So these are the things that are important to people and these are the things we'll be working very hard on to right. push in Parliament and that's what's important. Ian Murray, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning.